In the land of fadeless day lies the city for swear. It shall never pass away, and there is no night there. Touch a word, 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 a all the gates of pearl are made in the city for swear. All the streets with gold are laid, and there is no night there. God shall watch over all the tears, there's no death, no pain, no fears, and they come. city for swear. There lies crystal river flows, and there is no night there. God shall watch over all tears, there's no death, no death, no pain, no fears, and they Jesus is the vow that my heart has made. Though I often am tempted to leave him, yet unto him my heart is saved. Not a step, not a step will I take, will I take not a step without him will I go. step will I take without Jesus as I travel upon life's way. Though temptations may be all around me, I will follow my Lord each day. Not a step, not a step will I take, will I take not a step without Him will I go, will I go. He will lead me along, me along, to that beautiful home over there, over there. Not a step will I take without Jesus, where he leads I can never stray. From the path that will lead me to glory, to that land of eternal not a step will I take, will I take, not a step without him will I go, will I go. He will lead, he will lead me along, me along to that beautiful home over there. Oh, ngat ngabi mga patid.
So tulad po ng ating naipangako po nung Luis ng gabi, Merkos ng gabi po, tayo magkakaroon ng pag-aaral po sa pamagitan ng Facebook Live. So tayo nagpapasalamat po sa Pio sa pagkakato na ito. Napatuloy po ang ating paglilinig ko sa pamagitan ng teknolohiya na ito na kahit po na sa internet po ay maraming pwedeng mapuntahan ng ating pag-aaral. So sa ating mga kaisona, maaaring gabi sa inyong tanahan mga isungon, sa ating mga katugangan dyan sa may Bicol region, Diyos maraming na banggi sa inyong tugabos, sa aking mga tugang kang Kristo, Uh, dito po sa may pangkasinan, na Santos sa Labi, at si kayo namin uh, sa ating mga kakapsa, na imbang karabi, kada kayo amin kakapsa. Dito po sa amin lugar, maay pa ba yung kaya kong han? At kung kayo po itagin doon sa Malaysia, salamat, malam. So ang ating pong paksa sa gabi ito ay tungkol po sa isang mga, tal- mga talata, di matatagpon po natin sa Matthew chapter 7, 1 to 5. At uh, ito po ay ating magiging basihan ng ating uh, pag-aaral po sa gabing ito. At ating basahin, Judge not that you be not judged. For with, the, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from, from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So ito po sa ating uh, sariling wika. Dito po sa bagong salin. Dito po sa Mateo. Kapitong Kabanata. Talatang unang kay kalima. Huwag humatol upang hindi kayo mahatulan. Sapagkat sa hatol na inyong iahayag, iahatol ay ahatulan kayo. At sa panukat na inyong isusukat ay susukatin kayo. Bakit mo nakikita ang puwing na nasa mata ng iyong kapatid, ngunit hindi mo pinapasit ang pros na nasa iyong sariling mata? O paano mong masasabi, paano mong nasasabi sa iyong kapatid, ayaan mong alisin ko ang puwing sa iyong mata, samantalang mayroong pros sa iyong sariling mata? Ikaw na mapagkunwari, alisin mo muna ang proso sa iyong sariling mata at na magkagayon makakita ka ng malinaw upang maalis mo ang puwing sa mata ng iyong kapatid. So yun po sa ating wika. Dito pong mga talatang ito ay malimit na hindi maunawa. So this five verses from the seventh ma- uh, chapter of Matthew usually are not clearly understood by some people. Halimbawa po yung mga denominasyon pagka tayo po'y nakikipag-aral sa kanila at ating sinasabi ang kailang maling aral, sasabihin nila huwag mo kaming atulan sa aming aral. Wala kayong karapatan na atulan kami. So pagka sinasabi ng Panginoon, huwag kayong humato. So they use that excuse that when we study with the denomination and point to them their doctrinal errors, they will say, Christ said, do not judge. So do not judge that we are wrong in our doctrine. So they use that as an excuse or alibi. Eh din po sa Pentecostals. Pagka sinasabi natin, wala kayong kapangyarihan gumamot. At sabihin natin, patunayan nyo, meron kayong kapangyarihan na gumamot. At sasabihin nila, wag kayong humato. So, ganun din po sa mga Pentecostals. When we tell them that they, don't, they do not have the power to heal, and we want to sh- them to show us that really they have power to heal, they will say, do not judge us. And when people sin, pag nagkakasal ng mga tao, they say, do not judge us. So ano bang ibig sabihin ng ating Panginoon nang sabihin niya, huwag kayong humatol upang huwag kayong hatulan? Yung ba'y nangangahulugan ng isang blanket condemnation ng paghato? Or blanket condemnation of judging? That we cannot judge na hindi tayo maaaring humatol sa anumang bagay. So yun po ang ating titignan. Ano ba sinasabi ng ating Panginoon? Alam mo, tinuad bang itinuturo niya dito sa limang talata sa ikapitong kabanata ng Matthew o Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 to 5. So, walang tignan po natin. Totoo ba na wala tayong karapatang humato? 
is it true that we do not have the right to judge? Absolutely, we do not have the right to judge. For if we judge, then we'll be judged also. Yung bang sinasabi ng, ng ating Panginoon, is that what Christ is teaching on these verses? That we cannot really judge. What's, what is judging? Tingnan po natin ang definition ng paghatol. What, is, what do we mean when we judge? The Greek word for judge in this verse means to separate, put asunder, to pick out, select, choose. This is, a, this are, this is definition is ay galing po kay Thayer. Ito, yung, ito po yung kahulugan ang bibigay ni Thayer. Ito meron po sa diksyonaryo ng mga wikang Greg. Sabi niya, to separate, to put asunder, to pick out, select, or choose. So, ibig sabihin, hiwalay, piliin. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng uh, judge. For instance, if you are a judge in a contest, you pick out or select or choose the winner. You separate the winner from the rest of the contestant. Iyo ba yung judging? Inihiwalay natin yung nanalo doon sa mga uh, sumasali. We separate the winner. We choose to separate the winner from the rest of the contestants. O kaya, if you are in a court of law, when we judge a person to have sinned, we separate him and give him the corresponding punishment. Kaya sa ihiwalay sa lipunan at siya kukulo kung kinakailangan. Or which we are referee, sa isang laro. We separate one who committed a foul and give penalty. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng judge. You separate. You, you select. You choose. So pag kumahatol, tayo pumipilin tayo. Yun, yun ang makikita natin. We, we, tayo po pumipilin ng ating desisyon. Halimbawa, kung ano po ang ating desisyon pag tayo po yung mahatol. So that's judging. So pag kumahatol ka, ganun ang gagawin mo. Halimbawa, pumipili ka sa iyong sarili ng mabuting gagawin mo. So, pinag-iisipan mo yung, yung gagawin mo at ito y- yung pipili at ihiwalay mo doon sa ibang mga bagay na pwede mo rin gawin. That's judgment. Kung ikaw ay uh, magkakasala o hindi, pipiliin mo. You separate your decision not to sin. Inihiwalay mo yon Yun ang iyong pinili. So, yun ibig sabihin ng judging. Kung tayo po ay uh, in- na- pumipili, inihiwalay, ng mga bagay na gusto nating gawin. That's judging. Ngayon, ang katanungan, does the Bible condemn all kinds of judgments? Judgment. Yun ang ating gustong tanong. Yun, yun ang gusto nating malaman. We would like to know if the Bible condemned, condemns all kinds of judgment. Absolutely condemning judgment. Yung ba ang sinuturo ng Biblia? Is that what the Scripture is teaching about judgment? The answer is no. Yung saan sagot po dyan ay hindi. No, we are, not, we are not, the Bible doesn't condemn all kinds of judgment. We are condemned, we are commanded to judge on certain actions of brethren or on certain aspects of doctrine. So, kung tisignan po natin sa ating pagkikisalamuha, sa ating mga kapatid, sa isang kongregasyon, halimbawa, Inaantulan natin sila sa mga bagay na kailang ginagawa kung sila ay nagkakasala o hindi. For instance, yung po mga, yung mga elders. Di ba yung elders, silang nagdidesisyon sa mga bagay sa loob ng kongregasyon. So they, they do some form of judgment. Kung nagkasala ang kapatid, they, they all make a judgment. Kung nagkasala nga siya o hindi, o karapat dapat siyang uh, iwasto o disiplinahin. So, mayroong puri na judgment na ipinahihin tulad sa atin ng Diyos. For instance, sabi nga po na, judge discipline. When we discipline a brother, we have judged him that he has sinned and worthy of church discipline if he doesn't repent. So, papaano tayo, papaano natin sasabihin ng isang kapag nagkakasala kung di natin nakatulang na yung ginawa niya kasalanan? Di ba? So, we are judging that a brother has sinned. For instance, in the post of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 5, it is actually reported that there are there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles. So, ito yung uri ng pahigapid na hindi man 
nakikita sa mga hintil kayo, that a man asks his father's wife, and you're pop up and have not rather mourned that he was done, this deed might be taken away from among you. So, I said, pinapala, pinayintulutan lang nila in kasalanan ginagawa sa kapatid. For I indeed that as absent in body but present in spirit have already judged as though I were present, he must done this deed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when you are gathered together along with my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So ito isang, ito isang paghato. Paul has judged that this brother has committed fornication. Kaya mga kapatid sa Corinto, alam din nila ang bagay na ito, na ito kapatid, ito ay nagkakasal ng pagkikapit. So, ano sabi ni Apostle Paul? You separate him. You withdraw from him. So, ito is charge discipline. You withdraw from him so that his flesh will be destroyed or the sin will be destroyed by repentance so that the spirit may be saved in the day of judgment. So, wala bang paghatol doon? Kung wala at wala tayong karapatang humatol, paano natin sasabihin ng isang kapatid ng kasal o hindi? If we do not have the, the right to judge, how can we say a, a brother is sinning or not if we cannot judge? If you are forbidden to judge, hindi ba? So, merong, merong uri ng paghatol. In this instance, you are judging what the brother has done. So, he needs to repent. So, the Lord will forgive him. Hindi ba? Hindi siya sabi. Kaya nagagad si Apostle Paul dahil wala siyang ginagawa with regards to sa ginawa ng kapatid na yun. So there's a form of judgment in correcting and restoring erring brethren. How can we correct and restore a brother who has sinned if we cannot judge him as sinning? Paano na? Paano natin siya paano natin siya sasabihin ng kasalas siya kung hindi natin siya katulad na nagkasala siya. If judging is absolutely for, forbidden, then we cannot judge a brother as sinning. How can you correct a brother if we have not judged him to be sinning? Miuma. Here's a Galatians 6.1. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you are spiritual to store such a one in a spirit of gentleness or meekness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Pag tayo po ay spiritual o tayo spiritual mature, at nakita natin siyang kapatid ng kakasasala siya, gusto natin siya pa panambalikin mula sa kanyang pagkakasala. Pero magingat pa rin tayo. Baka sa ating pagnanasang may balik natin si pati ka magkasala. Misa mag-away pa kayo. Misa, in other words, hindi mo gaayos yung gaya. Gagamit sa tamang paraan. But there is judgment. You are judging a brother as erring or sinning. Because if not, how can we correct him if we did not judge him to be erring or sinning? You know what? There is a form of judgment. Got in this in James chapter 5, verse 19. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him let him know that he will turn a sinner from the error of his way, will save a soul from death, and cover a multitude of sins. So, paano natin malalaman ng isang kapatid ay nawawala sa katotohanan? How can we say that somebody is wandering from the truth if we cannot judge him as wandering from the truth? Definitely, there is a standard, and that's the truth. And if you wander from the truth, then you're sinning. You need to go back to the truth. And yung babalik natin, kapatid, sa katotohanan, hindi wala mga paghahatol doon. So if you are forbidden to judge, then we cannot judge someone as wandering from the truth. Hindi at pwede nga tuwan sa kapatid na sinin manawawala sa katotohanan. Di ba? Ganun din. 
dito sa ang isang trabaho ng isang mga I want to work of a being a preacher and a very difficult part of his work is to rebuke bread you rebuke bread pag sinabi natin rebuke pinag pinagbibigkaan natin ang isang kapatid na nagkakasala dito sa 2 Timothy at chapter 4 verse 2 preach the word be ready in season and out of season Convinced, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. If we are forbidden to judge, we cannot even preach the gospel. Because when we preach the gospel as the power of God's salvation, then we are judging those people in the gospel to be sinning. Because simply lang po yan, mga patid. Kung uh, hindi tayo pwedeng humato, hindi rin tayo pwedeng mangaral ng Ibanghelyo dahil inahatulan natin yung inaaralan natin na nagkakasala. Otherwise, bakit natin ituturo ng Ibanghelyo kung hindi sila nagkakasala? Hindi ba mga kapatid? So kahit ganun, meron tayong paraan na tayo humato kung tayo po ay pagbibikaan natin sa kapatid. Convince, rebuke. We rebuke. So he judged a person to be incorrect and needs to be uh, corrected. Do you know? And then uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 15. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. So how can we rebuke with all authority if we have not judged a brother to be in error or to be, or to be sinning? Do you know? Paano natin mawawas yun, kapatid, kung wala tayong karapit sa bisya ng kakamali? At ibalik natin siya sa katotohanan. So this, makikita natin sa ating mga versikulang sinabi na mayroong huri ng paghahatol. There's a form of judgment. Ganun din po sa Magic chapter 18, 18, 17. If your brother sins against us, that's a form of judgment. We are judging a brother as sinning against us. Now, we do not have a pro the, if we do not have the right to judge, we cannot even judge a, a brother to be sinning against us. But if, bro if a brother has committed a sin against us, then we are judging him to have committed a sin against us. Niyuma. Kung makita natin, sinasabi natin sa isang kapatid na nagkasala ka sa akin, you are judging. You are judging that brother as sin against us or against you. And this is Matthew 18, Matthew 18, verse 15 to verse 17. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, you have, you have judged him to be sinning against you. You may, paano mo malalaman siya ng kasala sa'yo kung di mo yung natunan ng kasala sa sa'yo? Na meron ka napatunayan mo na nagkasala sa sa'yo. Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have, ga you, you have gained your brother. Pag siya nakinig, nagbagina tayo sa ating layunin. But he will, if you will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. Dino din pag doon. Uh, tulad ni kapatid na nagkaasala dahil hindi siya nagsisi sa kanyang pagkakaasala laban sa iyo. So dito makikita natin, we can judge the actions of brethren. Mag Pwede natin atulan ng mga bagay na ginagawa ng mga kapatid. Kung sila nagkakamali, o sila yung tapa. That's judging. That's judgment. Or we can judge on matters of doctrine. Noong po sa Corinth, Corinth during the time, meron po, meron pa spiritual gifts and some prophets are women. For the women to show their submission to the authority of men, they put covering on their head as a, as a sign of recognizing the authority of men over them. And prophecy is the only gift given both to men and women in the, in the New Testament when the spiritual gifts were still uh, in existence. Pero wala na po spiritual gifts. 
So, yung mga babae, sila lang po yung nagtatakip. Tatakip sila. Now, Paul argued that not even from, not only from the aspect of authority, that men have authority over women, even in nature. Judge among yourselves. That's judging. Judge among yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray? This woman is a prophetess. To pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? Pag ang isang lalaki may mahabang buho para sa nagiging babae, that is why it is a dishonor to a man with long hair. But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. So a woman was, was a proper test need to have a covering on her hair. And even on the natural aspect of things, women has long women have long hair and men have short hair. So sabi ni Pablo, judge among yourselves. At tulad niyo isa't isa kanya. Ano ba talaga? Hindi ba sabi niya kahit ang, ang kalikasan, nature, sinasabi ng babae na may mahabang buhok, ay ito'y kalulatian sa kanya. Ang isang lalaking may mahabang buhok, ito'y kahiyan sa kanya. So judge among yourselves. Ganyan. So there's a judgment. Ay sabihin, ah, tulad niya, diba? Di, ba, di ba makikita sa ano, kanya? Sa kalikasan, sa nature, ganyan? sa katalagahan? So judge among yourselves. So if judging is absolutely forbidden, you cannot even judge. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin ni Pablo, judge among yourselves, ganyan. So we can judge in all matters of doctrine or all matters of faith. We judge what is truth according to the word of God. We separate. We choose. We pick. We, we pick the, the truth according to the word of God. That's our standard. Whatever is taught by the word of God is the truth. Outside of that is false. So we judge outside the word of God as being false. That's judging. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 13 hanggang verse 15, ang ginagamit po natin ng ASV, American Standard Version, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Spirit teacheth, combining spiritual things with the spiritual words. Now the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and he cannot know them because they are spiritually judged. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, and himself is judged of no man. Tinan niya, sabi niya, that he that is spiritual judgeth all things. So, mayroon tayong karapatang matul sa lahat ng mga bagay kung ito'y katotohanan o hindi. Paano natin malalaman ng mga bagay na spiritual? Sa pamagitan kung anong sinasabi ng spiritual na salita na ipinig sa atin ng Espiritu Santo at naisulat niya ng ating bagong tipa. So, nalalaman natin ng katotohanan sa pamagitan at salita ng Diyos. Yung mga bagay na hindi sinasabi ng Biblia, hindi mga bagay na spiritual. Hindi natin pwedeng gawin nyo. We judge. Sabi nga nito, but it is spiritual, yung pong kumikilala sa, to, sa kaloban ng Diyos, judge all things. Sa paanong parang? By the word of God. So, meron tayong paghato. We judge what is truth and what is not. Eh kung bawal ang humato, ulit pa natin malalaman ng katotohanan. O di ba? Ganun din po si Apostle Paul. Maraming pagkakato si Apostle Paul, inatulan niya ang ilan na nagtuturo ng maling aral. So if you cannot judge, we cannot say that men are teaching false doctrine. Because if, we, if you say that you are teaching a false doctrine, that means... What you are teaching is not from the Word of God. You separate. You are separating them because they are not teaching according to the Word of God. You make them distinct. Sa ating, dahil hindi siya tuturo ng salita ng Diyos, then you are judging. Dito po sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to verse 18. Paul wrote the whole chapter, 15th chapter of the book of First book to the Corinthians to refute 
the false doctrine that there is no resurrection. Pero paano malalaman ni Apostle Paul that that is a false doctrine if he is not if he has not judged it according to the word of God. Paano malalaman ng isang bagay mo na kung di mo ito inatulan ay sa salita ng Diyos? That's judging. Hindi paghatol. Sabi rito, sa verse 12, Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Sabi, pinatulayan doon sa unang bahagi, Paul has proven from the first part that Christ indeed raised, resurrected from the dead because they were witnesses. But according to the law of Moses, in the, with two or three witnesses, everything is established. So, we say, ito hindi lang dalawang tatlong saksi yan. So, it has already been established because of these witnesses that Christ did raise, rise, raise, did rise from the dead. Say, nabuhay muli sa mga patay. Pero, sabi rito, now with Christ, is preached preach that he has been raised from the dead, How do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? There was a false doctrine among some brethren in the church of Corinth that they believe that there is no resurrection from the dead. That there is no resurrection of the dead. So Paul argued in verse 13, But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not reason. Kung walang pagkabuhin na maguli sa mga patay, si Christ hindi na buhin na maguli. And if Christ is not reason, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Dahil ang Ebanghelya ay binigyan ng kahulungan ni Paul doon sa ulang apat na bahay na si Kristo ay namatay, na ilibig, at nabuhin na maguli. So kung walang pagkabuhin na maguli, walang Ebanghelya. Ako para ng palantayo kayo, walang kabulungan. Verse 15. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He did not raise up. Sabi niya, kung hindi siya nabuhin na maguli, kami bulang saksi. Na kami nagpapatunan na si Christian na buhin ay binin na maguli ng Diyos. If in fact, the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not a reason. And if Christ is not a reason, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Hindi na buhin na maguli ang Panginoon ng ating mga kasalanan ay taglay pa rin natin. That is a first Peter chapter 3 verse 21. Bakit ang... ang ang bautismo ay nagliligtas dahil si Kristo na buhay na maguli wala sa mga patay. Ito po sa 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 sa New King James, There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Sa pamagitan ng pagkabuhay na maguli ng ating Panginoon, sapagkat kung na buhay na maguli ang Panginoon na pinatunangin niya na siya ang anak ng Diyos na may kapangyari niya. Eh kung walang pagkabuhin na maguli, wala tayong kaligtasan, di ba? Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. Siyempre na tayong pinangawawa, dahil may mga bagay na ating ginagawa. Tapos hindi man pala tayong mabubuhin na maguli. Eh para saan pa yung ating pagpipigil sa mga bagay na ayon natin gamit sa pagkati kasalanan sa Diyos. So ito po isang halimbawa that Paul judged certain men teaching false doctrine. Example, si Imenaeus and Alexander. This is 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2 of Philotus. Imenaeus and Philotus. And 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 17. And their message will spread like cancer. Imenaeus and Philotus are of this sort. We have strayed concerning the faith, the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. So, Paul has judged that Imenaeus and Philotus were teaching false doctrine that the resurrection is already past. Paano nalaman yun? Because Paul judged, based on the word of God, that that doctrine is false. So, kung hindi siya pwedeng umatol, paano niya malalaman itong mga tao tinagkasala? We separate the doctrine as false because of the word of God. That's judging, you know. Say, 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 Apostle Peter. Paul withstood Apostle Peter face to face because he was to be blamed. So Paul judged Peter as guilty. He's to be blamed. Say, Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, and verse 
uh, 16. Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I would stood him to his face, because he was to be blamed. For before certain men from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. Nung wala pa yung mga, mga hudyo na kasama ni James, si, si Pedro ay kumakasama ng mga hentil. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they went straight forward about the truth of the gospel, so Paul judged them as not being straightforward about the truth of the gospel. I said to Peter before them all, if you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel the Gentiles to live as Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus that he might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So ito yung natulang ni Apostle Paul, si Pedro, na nakasala. Na siya lumabag sa ibanghena ng ating Panginoon. Na hindi tayo naaring ganap sa pamagitan ng kautsin ni Moises, kundi sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Kristo. So, paano ngayon, pa, paano yung pagsasabihin ni Pedro, ay si Pablo, si Pedro, kung di naman siya nagkasala? At paano na, 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 mas, masasabi ni Pablo na nagkasala si Pedro, kung hindi niya tulad si Pedro na nagkasala? Di ba? O yung mga Korinto, tingnan Korinto, sa first chapter, the uh, first letter of Paul to the Corinth, Corinthians. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. And there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, ay natulang sila, na wag magkaroon ng pagkabahabahagi, dahil may pagkabahabahagi. With regards to the preacher, sabi, I am of Paul, I am of Peter, I am of Cephas, I am of Apollos, I am of Christ. The brethren in Corinth were having divisions over the preachers. Sabi ni Pablo, Paul judged them to be immature. Paul, because of their actions of um, instigating divisions, he judged them as being still immature. First Corinthians 6, chapter 3, verse 1, the verse 4, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Ibig sabihin, sa katagalan ng pagiging kristyano ng mga taga-Korinto, hindi pa rin sila namago sa kailang pananampalataya. They are still babes in Christ. I fed you with milk, past tense, and not with solid food. For until now, you are, you are not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am a Paul, and another, I am a Apollos, are you not carnal? So Paul judged the Corinthians as being guilty of provoking divisions among themselves. Pero paano niya sinabing nakakasala kayo ng pagkababahagi kung wala karapatan si Pablo na hatulan ang mga kapag sa salita ng Diyos? Now, we cannot judge doctrine based on our opinions. We judge doctrine based on the, the Word of God. Romans 12, 16, We have the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. We cannot judge doctrine based on our own opinion, but based on the Word of God. In the selection of elders and deacons, we need judgment. We need to judge people as being um, qualified based on the qualifications revealed by the Holy Spirit in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Titus chapter 1. Sabrito, this is a faithful saying, if a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop or an overseer then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, 
hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man doesn't know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the charge of God? Not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. Ganon din po mga dikas, their qualifications. So we judge people as being qualified or not qualified based on the word of God. So there is judgment, human. So that means we have proven that we can judge. That judgment is not absolutely forbidden by the Lord. Then he said, judge not, so you, so you do not be judged. Can you? So what kind of judgment is being prohibited by the Lord? We cannot judge people. We can judge the actions of people. We can judge people of sinning because of their actions, but we cannot judge people. We can only, we can only judge what they did as being sinful. So Matthew chapter 7 deals with the judgment of things and not people. We cannot say we are a um, evil, natural, the evil people, person. You cannot change. We only judge the things they do. You know, makikita natin. We we judge them at being at sinning because of the things they do. Hindi dahil sa talagang sila ay masama or something like that, di ba? So hindi tayo mahatol lang tao. Only the Lord will judge people as worthy of punishment or of uh, salvation sa sa langit. Hindi tayo. Hindi natin sabi, uh, sigurad po punta sa impyan, hindi natin masasabi yun. Dahil pwede magsisi yung tao. Pwede siya magbago. We cannot say that he did it, he did that because he is naturally evil and will never change. We cannot know his motive. We can only judge what he did. Ito ang problema sa atin. <coughs> pag nakit, pag uh, isang sumasobra ng ating paghatol. Hindi natin natulad yung ginawa niya. Hindi natulad namin siya natin yung tao. Hindi naman lahat na nagkakasala ay talagang masabang tao. Isa natukso lang sila. O may mga tao talagang magpapatuloy sa kasamaan. Pero hindi naman lahat ng tao gano'n. Misa nagkamali lang. Hindi naman talaga sila gano'n. So that, just because a, a person sinned is evil. If he continues, siguro. But pero kung nagkamali lang siya, paano if, if we just make a mistake? And you repent. Paano masasabing masamang tao yun? Hindi pwede na pwede gawin. Hindi na pwede gawin yun. So, we forbid the holier than thou attitude. Sabi niya, And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck, speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Sabihin, alam bakit ka gano'n? Ibig sabihin, pagka ganyan, sa malaki pa yung pagkakasala mo, tapos sinakatulang mo yung kapatid mo na nagkakasala, mas maliit na pagkakasala kaysa sa'yo. Na siya isang tao magsalanan. Samantalang kayo gumagawa ng mas malaking kasalanan. So this means, while you are guilty of a more serious sin, you are judging your fellow man. You can see smaller sin, but you do not realize your more serious sin. That's hypocritical judgment. So, what Christ is, pro is condemning is hypocritical judging. Hypocrit hypocritical judgment. Ginagawa mo. Inaatulang mo yung kapatid, ginagawa mo rin. O mas masawal ka pa. In Romans chapter 1, ganoon ang kasalanan ng mga Hudyo. They are judging the Gentiles as sinners when the Jews themselves are also doing the same. Ginoon nyo, sa Romans chapter 1, ano po? Sayin po natin. Chapter 2, chapter 2. 
Sabi dito sa verse uh, um, 17. Indeed you are called a Jew and rest on the law and make your boast in God and know His will and approve the things that are excellent being instructed out of the law. And you are confident that you are yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and truth in the law. You therefore teach another, do not teach yourself. Yun ang pinagbabaw ng Panginoon. Tinuturo mo iba, di ba tinuturo sa alina mo kayo? You preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You will say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You abhor idols, do you rob temples? You will make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. So ito pinagbabawal ng Panginoon, a prophetical judgment. Tinutsabi mo nagkakasalan ka ba? Pero ikaw mismo rin nagkakasalan na mas mabigat na pagkakasalan. Yun ang pinagbabawal ng Panginoon sa Matthew chapter 7. The Lord is not condemning absolutely all kinds of judgment. He's condemning a pre-hypocritical judgment. For instance, refusing to forgive someone who has repented. Sabi niya, hindi ko, pa, hindi ko, pa, hindi ko patatawarin ang tao na yan kasi talagang ganyan niya, hindi na magbabago yan. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin yun. We are obligated to forgive someone when we repent. Alam niyo, sabi niya, paano kung nilolo ko kayo? Kasi lang, problema ng ngayon. Makaharapin niya sa Diyos niyo. Pero ikaw, pwede ka lang patawarin mo sa pag, pag umisa ng tao sa iyo. Ikaw, wala kang problema. Kasi may problema. Dahil sabi rin ito sa Matthew 18, verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Pabayit na nga si Pedro eh. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. That's not literal. Number seven is complete. And seventy times seven, times ten is seventy. Then number ten also means complete. So if you could forgive him, you give him complete forgiveness. Tapos gumawa siya ng isang parable. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. But as he wasn't able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him and saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Ganyan niyo, may isa ng tawad, napatawaran siya sa kanyang mga pagkakasala. Nirelease siya ng Panginoon sa kanyang pagkakasala, ayaw, sa kanyang kautak. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred dinar, dinari. Dinara. Mas kuntong pera yun, makisa 10,000 talents. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will, I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into, the, into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that he had done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all the debts because you begged me. She did also have compassion on your fellow servant, just, uh, just as I had pity on you. And his master was angry and delivered him to the tor torturers until he should pay all that he has due him. My heavenly Father also will do to you if it's of you from his heart, does not forgive his brother's trespasses. Pagka umingin ng tao sa iyong kapatid at di mo siya pinatawad, you are, you are committing hypocritical judgment. Na hindi ka na patawarin ang kapatid na iyo. Hindi mo nakalimutan mo na ba kung ayaw mo patawarin ang kapatid na ikaw pinatawad din ang Diyos sa iyong pagkakasala. 
babalik sa iyo macho 7. Ah, tulang ka ng Diyos kung paano mo inatulan yung kapatid mo. If you, if you judge him not worthy of forgiveness, then Jesus on the last day will also judge you as not worthy of being forgiven. Ay, pupunta ka sa impyerno pagka ano. Sometimes you judge brethren that they are not, that we judge them as not capable of changing into a much better servant or much better person. Eh, wala nang problem, wala pag-asa yan. Ngayon talaga yung tao yan. Hindi na magbabago yan. Kaya hindi ka na nagbabago. You want others to change, but you yourself do not change. Yun, yun yung pabalik, pabalik, pabalik sa Matthew chapter 7. You are judging your brother as not being capable of changing into a much, ber- much better person or much better Christian when yourself doesn't change. Ikaw mismo din nagbabago, pero sasabi mo sa kapatid mo, ay, wala na pag-asa yung tao na yan. Ikaw rin, wala na pag-asa, hindi mo. Kung hindi mo pinatawad ang isang kapatid na namingin ng tao, mas masawa ka sa kanya. It takes a man to repent. Tandaan natin yan. Mahirap gawin niyo. Kaya mo siyang patawarin. Anong gagawin siya ng Panginoon pagdating ng araw? Hindi ka niya patatawarin. Hindi ka niya niligtas. Because you need to have compassion and brethren. Lala kung siya nag-umingin ng kapatawaran. Di ba? When you, when you judge others as not having the ability to change, you are negating repentance and the power of the gospel. Tandaan natin, mga masasamang mga tao naging mga kasyana. Masasamang tao nagbago dahil sa Ibanghelyo. Sa so 1 Corinthians chapter 6, ginan po natin. Yung mga taga-Korinto, ano ba sila dati? Sila yung mga, masas- sila yung mga makasalanan. Nagbago sila, di ba? Masayin po natin. So, first of just chapter 6, verse, uh, verse 10, verse 9. Do, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you. Were some of you. Past tense. Nagbago sila. But such were some of you. But you are washed. But you are sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The gospel has the power to change people. Kaya nga kayo ng Kapanginan Diyos kaligtasan. That's, that's the judgment that the Lord is condemning. Inahatulan mo yung tao. Wala na ang pag-asa. Meron, wala. Lahat ang tao yung pag-asa magbago. Kung sila yung maniniwala at susunod sa Ebanghelyo. Ang isang krisyan ng kasala, mayroon siyang pag-asa. Kung siya magsisisi, patatawarin siya ng Diyos. E bakit hindi mo siya patatawarin kung nagkasala sa sayo? Okay. Yun sa 1 John, mas, mas ikaw ba'y mas makapangyarang kaysa sa Diyos? Sa 1 John, masaya natin, chapter 1. Sabi dito. Verse 7, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. This is a binary sign inference. God recognizes that even if you are a Christian, you will still sin. Magkakasala ka pa rin. Magkakamali ka pa rin. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, that's present tense. We deceive ourselves and the truth is something else. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, past tense, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. So lahat tayo nagkakamali. So bakit din natin patatawarin sa kapatid nagkamali sa atin kung umisi ng tawad? And you judge him not worthy of repentance or forgiveness? That's the judgment that the Lord 
is condemning. And Matthew chapter 7, yun ang sinasabi niya. So what is the nature of our judgment? Paano tayo ang ating paghatol? Ano ang bagay natin inahatol? What will be the nature of our judgment? The way we judge others will determine how God will judge us. Yun ang masakit dyan. Kung paano natin inahatol yung iba, ganun din ang paghatol na gagawin sa atin ng Diyos. Dito sa Matthew 6 verse 14 15. If you refuse to forgive, the Lord will forgive you. For if you forgive men their trespasses, you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Yun yung tingnan niyo. Anong paghahatol mo? Hindi ka nagpapatawad, hindi ka nagpatatawaran ng Diyos. Yun ang, yun ang paraan ng paghahatol mo sa kapatid. Hindi mo siya pinatatawad sa kanyang parangasalan. Kahit tumingi siya ng tawad, hindi ka rin patatawaan ng Panginoon pag humingi ng tawad. Sa so, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, Just like the Lord who is merciful, and because of His mercy forgave us through the gospel, the same manner that you should be merciful. Ephesians 4, verse 32, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. If you refuse to forgive, you are having a holier-than-thou attitude. Na ikay mas mataas sa iyong kapatid. Kaya ayaw mo siyang patawad. Eh, kasalanan po yan, mga kapatid. In order to properly judge others, we have to clear ourselves first. Ito pong, sa Matthew 7, makikita natin yan, doesn't forbid correction of others. Hindi, hindi tayo pinagbabawala na correct natin iba. Pero, pero in, sinasabi ng Panginoon na ayusin muna natin ang ating pagkakamali para matulungan natin ang iba. Kaya magkita mo, meron kang, meron kang malaking troso sa mata mo. Pag may troso sa mata mo, may makikita ka ba? Kaya may, may troso sa mata mo, paano mo nakikita ka pa ba nagkakamali? Kung may napwing siya. Kung may trosa ka sa iyong mata, kanya. So, alisin mo muna yung trosa sa iyong mata bago malisin yung matulungan mo yung kapatid mo, kanya. We should not judge by false impressions. May mga taong mga hatol dahil sa nakikita nila o sa kailan may impression. We cannot judge by mere impressions. Kung nakita mo siyang ganon, ganon na siya. Hindi, mo, hindi dapat ganon ang pating paghatol. So John chapter 7 verse 24, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Yung sinasabi natin, nagkasalang kapati, dahil nakita natin na siya'y lumabag sa kasabusan ng Panginoon. Yun, yun, yun ang righteous judgment. Hindi sa nakikita mo lang, o impression mo lang, umahatulo ka na ng kapatid na masama mo. Kasalanan po yung mga kapatid. Judgment is based on evidence and not what we think. Ang pagkatol ay dahil da da sa katibayan, hindi siya inisip natin. The judge in a court of law does not judge with his own impression of the crime. Sometimes a judge has an impression that, that the one being uh, tried is innocent. Meron siya impression na gano'n. Parang wala naman siya kasalanan. But if evidence shows uh, otherwise, then he has no choice but to judge. He must guilt to. Because the judgment is based on evidence and not what you think on your impression. Yung may problema mo, misin, gano'n tayo. O kaya, yeah, you judge because you don't like the person. Kasi maraming din yun. Hindi, hindi dapat na gano'n. Our judgment is not based on whether we like or do not like a person. It's based on the evidence. Tandaan po natin, we cannot judge on, on mere appearance or mere impression. Because, one number one, do, we do not have the ability to know what are the motives of another person. Hindi natin alam. Bakit ang gawa niya? Hindi natin alam. And when you profess to know 
them dahil kilala natin sila, kilala ko yan, gamo, and judge them based on the fact that kilala natin siya, we are making an improper judgment. Kahit kilala mo siya, di ba, na sinungaling, hindi naman lahat ng pagkakataon yung taong yun nagsisinungaling. O kahit alam natin ang isang kapatid ay isang dishonest na kapatid, hindi naman sa lahat ng pagkakataon ang kapatid na dishonest. So you need to be able to judge based on evidence and not sa ibang bagay na kilala ko yun eh. Oo, oh, ginawa yun, kilala ko yan. Paano mo nalaman? Mga nagkakamali tayo. So we have to base our judgment on evidence. That, if that is righteous judgment. Kung sa lima, nabalita mo, nagka, na, uh, ikaw pati nagkasala ka niya. Oo, oh, totoo yan ka niya. Paano mo nalaman? For instance, once sa a time, may isang kapatid, sabi, nanginginom yan. Inistorya sa amin. Ay, alam ba, ako lang. Hindi mo ako naniwala. Kahit alam ko, totoo. Pwede ko pa rin pwede sabihin, uminom ka, bakit wala akong ebidensya eh. Pero kung nakita ko siyang nanginginom, doon, sabi, grab, uminom ka, kasalala niya. O may magsasaksi. Basta yung ginagawa niya yun. Ang mapapatunayan nila, o di talagang pwede mo sabihin, nagkamali siya. Pero huwag narinig mo lang. O kaya talagang kinala mo siya na gano'n. E baka naman dito ito yung sinasabi nila. So yun po yung delikato doon. We cannot make improper judgment for the Lord. Magkakasala tayo sa Diyos. Ha? So yun ang pinagbabawon ng Panginoon sa Matthew chapter 7. It's an unrighteous judging. Hypocritical judging. Yan ang bawal. But we have the right to judge based on a righteous judgment. When a kamalin kapatid, we can judge. When a kamalin dan, there are ten katunayan ng kamalin siya. We can judge the denominations as teaching false death doctrine because we, we have evidence from the Word of God. Problem sa mga kapatid, malin turo nyo. Para naging malin, di nila alam. That is improper judgment. Hindi pwede sabihin malin turo nyo lang, hindi mo alam. Para mo nalaman ng malin. Dahil maraming mo lang. You have to prove you have to prove yourself na mali ang turo nila. By the Word of God, you compare what they teach with the Word of God. Yun ang, yun ang righteous judgment. Nakita natin. When Paul judged the Corinthians as guilty of teaching that there is no resurrection, he had evidence. He had evidence. Alam niya. When he judged Imanes and Philetus as teaching the terrestrial is fact. He knows. He has evidence. When he judged Peter as worthy of being blamed, he has evidence. He had evidence. Nakita niya eh. Doon ang paghatol. When he judged a brother, it is, not, it is not to condemn him, but to make him repent and change his way. That's brother law. Magmamal sa kapatid niyo. We do not correct or rebuke a brother because we hate him. But we love him. Para magbago siya. Yun ang basiyan kung ba't gagawin mo yun. Eh yun sa Matthew 7, Christ is not absolutely condemning, correcting others or judge, judging others based on their actions. Pero ang tin- tinasabi niya, um, kailangan tayong matul na matuwid. Hindi natin pwede sabihin ng tao na pupunta ka sa impyerno. Paano mo nalaman niyo? Paano kung nagbago siya? Pwede mo lang sabihin sa kanya kung hindi ka magbabago, Brad, at halikado ka dyan. Ayon sa salita ng Diyos. Yun sa sabihin ko. Pero the real judge of all men is Christ. Siya magsasabi siya, pupunta ka sa impyerno, pupunta ka sa langit. Paano siya sabihin ng isang kapatid na sa isip mo itapat, ay pupunta sa langit? Paano mo nalaman na siya itapat? Dahil siya nakikita mo sa kanya. Only the Lord knows the hearts of men. Kaya siya nakakaalam kung sino pupunta sa langit o pupunta sa impyo. We can only judge people by their actions based on the word of God. Yun lang pwede natin gawin. Pero beyond that, wala natin, wala natin tayong karapatan. Hindi natin pwede sabihin na talaga masamang tao yan. Eh. Wala na pag-asa yan. Hindi natin pwede sabihin yun. Dahil lahat, na, lahat tayo ay masamang kung gano'n Lahat tayo nagkasala bago tayo naging mga kristyano. Si Pablo ay mamamatay kristyano bago siya naging kristyano. But he was changed by the gospel. 
So, hindi natin pwedeng gawin ang karong klase ng paghapon. Misan, may mga maling case man sa atin. Pagka pinukorek natin mga kapatid, sasabihin na, sana sa mga babasa ang mahawal niya sa Biblia, that is improper judgment sa kanila. Dahil hindi mo kailang babasa ang bawal. Ang mahalaga, sa mo makikita niya na ipinahintulutan ng Diyos. That's the proper judgment. Para malaman natin kung anong gagawin natin o hindi, base sa salita ng Diyos. So ito po ang ating pag-aaral po sa Our judgment shall be with evidence. And, and our judgment is based not to condemn others, but to chase them and to save them. It's not them from the fire. Yun ang makikita natin. Ang pagmamahal natin para yung mga tao yung bago. Pero we need to judge with evidence. Kung nagkasala siya, kailangan mapatunayan natin na talagang nagkasala siya. So ito po ang ating pag-aaral po sa gabing ito. Maraming salamat. So ulitin natin mga versikulo ng Matthew 7, Matthew 5. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what in the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Yan ang sinabi ng Panginoon. It's condemning hypocritical and righteous judgment. Maraming salamat, mga kapatid. Kabatiin po natin mga bumati sa gabing ito. Pero hindi kasalanan, tandaan natin, nasabihin natin maling aral mo. Kung mapapatunayan mo sa Biblia na maling aram niya, yung makita natin. Earl Gabriel po, salunga. Good evening. General Ney, good evening. Report, gandang gabi po. Ojano Campo, good evening po. Joel Elario, na ibang, rab na ibang nga rabi, kada kayo amin kakabsat, watching here at SBFZ. God bless. Hindi po natin ako ng SBFZ. Samuel Graneta, good evening, brother. Maylin Manalo, good evening po. Leonid Rolisa, na ibang rabi, kada kayo amin kakabsat. Darwin Labi, watching brother. Rafael Ortiz, magandang gabi po. Medi Canona, may pabengki at katamungan. Kapampangan niya, ibig sabihin, magandang gabi sa ating lahat. John Bautista, good evening. Bilbar, Bilbar J. Mark, magandang gabi po. Carlito Ella Bella G., good evening, Brad. Mamaylin Pilina, ma maayong gabi po. Rafael Chabari, good evening. Kennedy Piligambol, good evening, Brad. Misan, sinasabi, masyada na kayo magsig magsalita. Pag sinabi niya yun, pinahatulan niya yung Panginoon. Gano'n ba siya kabagsik magsalita ko dun siya? Inatulan si John the Baptist yung sinabi niyang kayong lahi ng ulupong. O sabihin ni, ni Apostle po, kayong mga hangal, kanya. Gano'n kabagsik niya? Alam niyo, pagka sinasabi niyo yung gano'n na masyado kayong magsik magsalita, you are guilty. Meron kayong pagkakasalang ayaw niyong kaminin. Kasi kung, kung hindi, sabi nga eh, kung Kung bukusan mo ng alcohol yung balat mo, kahit ubusin mo yung alcohol, wala ka sugat, wala ka, wala ka mararamdama. Pero kung ikaw ay may sugat, masasaktat ka. I do not apologize for preaching the truth forthrightly. That's the way it should be. Hindi binobola mo lang kapag sinasabi mo. Eh na, sabihin natin kung ano yung totoo. Dahil yun ang maglilitas sa tao, hindi yung parahan ang pagsasalita, kundi kung katotohanan ang ating sinasabi. Hindi naman sa lahat ng pangangatong, ganun ang pangangatag. Hindi, hindi lang nyo kilala kung sino nagtuturo. Kung punta kayo sa akin, like, Church of Christ, magiging member kayo dito, makikita nyo, hindi sa, hindi sa lingko-lingko, ganun ang pangangarap. There, there are times na ganun ang pangangarap. There are times na hindi. It depends. Kung ano yung daw sinasabi mo. At kung ano gravity ng kinokorek mo. Di ba? Kung bagong kristyano lang yung kinokorek mo, may dahan-dahan mo lang ayusin niya. Pero kung yung nakikita may mga aral na tapong dekada na nagtuturo, kapag tapong dekada na nagtuturo, kapag hindi na dahan-dahan yan. 
kailangan ko lang sabihin sa diretsyong paraan kung ano dapat marinig. Di ba? But we do not judge people. Kung sa ganun, yung baksik magsalita. E kaya kaya, kung siguro yun, dapat mong marinig, parang bago ka. Di ba? Sabi nga ng kasabihan ni, eh, pa, pa, paano mo babalatan ng pusa? Kaya eh, babalatan mo sa dahan-dahan. O biglaan mong alisin ang balat niya. Hindi niya, mag, hindi niya magugusto. Bakit masasaktan siya? Kaya e dahan-dahan mo siyang alisin. Mararandaman niya. Kaya e biglaan mo siyang babalatan. Mararandaman din niya. Because truth hurts sometimes. So ito po ang ating uh, pag-aaral po sa gabing ito. There comes to my heart one sweet strain. Joyous refrain, I sing it again and again. Sweet peace, the gift of God's love. Peace, peace, sweet peace, wonderful gift from above. Oh, wonderful.
as a lamb that was led to the slaughter. Not a threat, not a word did you say. Help me, Lord, when my heart fills with anger. Your example I will not betray. You were threatened for me. You were slandered for me. Every thorn, every nail, every tear was for me. Sweet the thought that my soul may be mended and whole by my Lord who was broken for me. I've been saved by your word that is living. To a love that is fervently pure, precious blood from your cross brings redemption. With a hope that is living and sure, you were threatened for me. You were slandered for me. Every thorn, every nail. Every tear was for me, sweet the thought that my soul may be mended and whole by my Lord who was broken for me. Ito pong uh, sa awit na ito, Mended and Whole, hindi natin makikita sa ibang mga songbook, maliban lang po dun sa Wings for Worship, at saka po yung psalm, hymns, and spiritual songs. Kasi ito po yung ginawa ng isang kapatid, pangalit si Don Alexander, kung awit na ito. Ito yung magandang awit actually. Uh, sa paghahanap ko po ng awit na ito sa YouTube, na-discover ko yung uh, account ni Brother John Rogers. Uh, napakaraming ang gandang awit po doon. Si kapatid na John Rogers po ay isang kapatid sa ating, sa isang kapatid sa pananampalataya. Na taga Texas po siya. I'm pressing on the upward way New lights I'm gaining every day Still praying as I onward bound Lord, plant my feet on higher ground Lord, let me
purpose version ng higher ground na po, may iba po sa nakasanay naka natin three force. So yun po ang ating pag-aaral po sa gabing ito. Sana po na tayo po ay natutunan uh, natin ng tamang paghatol sa mga kapatid, sa mga bagay na kayo nang ginagawa, kung sino kakamali, o sa mga bagay-bagay, ang base mga aral, yun po ang tamang paghatol. Ito yung base sa matuwid na paghatol, ang base sa evidence na meron tayo. Hindi sa mga bagay na iniisip lang natin, o kaya sa impression lang natin. Impression cannot judge. What you think cannot judge. Judgment should be based on evidence. Righteous judgment. It should be a merciful judgment. Tandaan po natin. So maraming salamat po mga kapatid sa inyong uh, pakikinig. Tayo po yung maghihiwalay sa pamagitan ng maikling panalangin. Huwag ba na? Kami po ay uh, muling nagpapasalamat sa inyo. Nagagalak sa pagkakataon na kami nakapaglilingkod sa inyo sa mga bagay na sa inyong kalooban. Sa malilit na bagay tulad po ng aming pangangaraw sa inyong salita. Sana ito'y magkaroon po ng influensya sa mga nakikinig. Uh, sila'y sumunod sa inyong, ayon sa inyong kalooban. Ingatan niya yung mga puso ama sa inyong paghatol. Dahil sana po ay paghatol ay isang matwid na paghatol at hindi base sa aming damdamin o iniisip, kundi base sa mga pagay na tunay base sa katibayan. Kami po sana'y maging mapagpatawad, mawain sa inyong mga kapatid, higit sa lahat sa mga kapatid namin ang kakamali sa amin. Ama, paintulutan niyo na kami magkaroon ng malinis na kaisipan at dalisay ng puso at matuwid na pananampalataya. Patawaan niyo kami, Ama, sa inyong mga pagkakamali at ang mga bagay tayo mong hini, sa kinang pangalas sa Kristo. Amen. So, we po ang ating pag-aaral na using the Lord, the name of the Lord in vain. Tanam po natin ang pakala ng Diyos sa iba na. Ito'y pakala ng Diyos. Kailangan natin ginagamit ang Diyos sa isang paraan na worthy ng kanyang pagiging Diyos. Yun ang ating uh, uh, paglilingkod po sa araw ng Biyernes, uh, January 27, hindi na nagkakamali. Yung totoo po, uh, 25 yata, yung basta Biyernes, Friday. Ngayon po tayo. God bless. Uh, sana po ay magkaroon tayo ng matiwasay na gabi.